Hello viewers, hope you are all doing great. I welcome you all to my channel Fundamentals of Optometry. Our today's topic is contact lens polymer matrix. It is a rarely discussed topic but a very important concept to understand by all the students and the practicing optometrists. Now contact lens polymer matrix means the anatomy of the contact lens polymer. See in our day to day practice we deal with a lot of soft contact lenses of various brands, materials. We tend to explain a lot about the water content and other advantages and benefits to the consumers. But as an optometrist, we have to understand the reason behind the various properties of soft contact lenses and which is actually the polymer matrix. That is the microscopic structure of the soft contact lens. So let's begin. Now here you can see a picture of a hydrogel polymer that is polyhydroethyl acrylate which is silica where this polymer has actually cross-linked with each other to form pores in between. Now these pores are responsible for holding a certain percentage of water in the lens which makes the lens uh, being called as a low water content or a high water content lenses. Now low water and high water depends on the kind of polymers which are being formulated in the contact lens along with that the number of pores and the size of the pores of the contact lens. So this is a typical picture of the contact lens matrix where you can see a number of pores have been formed due to the cross linkages of the polymer and on these pores not only the water content but also the DK and DK by T oxygen flux the equivalent oxygen percentage that is any oxygen related parameters are also dependent. Now the contact lens polymer matrix not only contributes towards understanding the water content and the other oxygen related properties of the contact lens but it also contributes towards understanding the structural integrity of the contact lens like the tensile strength, the modulus of elasticity and so on. Now before that let's first understand what is a polymer. A polymer is a large macromolecule which is composed of hundreds or thousands of repeating molecule called monomer and these monomers are connecting to each other with the help of covalent bonds and this process by which the polymer is formed is called polymerization. Okay, So therefore the polymer is formed by repeated bonding of the monomers with each other that is forming a chain and that formation of the polymer chain is called polymerization. Now what is covalent bond? Covalent bond is actually the sharing of electrons between the two atoms. Now in this process of polymerization there is another agent which is called initiator that is a reactive molecule that initiator helps in beginning the process of polymerization. Now polymerization initiators are typically selected based on the interaction with the reactive functional groups within the monomers. Now radicals are formed on the breakdown of this initiator which then induce the polymerization by stripping a radical from the monomer functional group and therefore this particular type of polymerization is called the free radical polymerization. In fact most of the contact lens polymer matrix are being made by this free radical polymerization. Now this is an important point to note that other than covalent bonds there are contact lenses where the polymers get formed by electrovalent bonds as well. Electrovalent bond is where the valence electron from one atom is permanently getting transferred to another atom. So as a result the electronegative atoms are being formed in the network of those polymer chains. Now the more number of electronegative atoms are there in the cross-linked polymers they will attract more water molecules through the hydrogen bonds. And thus that will determine the water content property of those materials. So for a better understanding, I have again brought the same picture in this slide where in these pores, if there are more number of electronegative atoms present, then they will be forming more water molecules here through hydrogen bonds. Okay. So as a result, what will happen? The water content property of the lens will increase. Not only that, this particular bonding also contributes to the ionicity of the lens. Okay, And that becomes a major concern because in ionic lenses, we know the protein deposition becomes higher. Okay, So therefore, it becomes a major concern with a low water content or a high water content lens with ionic property. 
Now, as we all know that contact lens is a very delicate optical device which is placed directly over the cornea. Therefore, the polymer chosen for contact lens has to be such so that it is biocompatible enough and should have all those required physical and chemical properties to be used comfortably over the cornea. Not only that, the polymer should be such so that it can, its uh, property can also be altered under the various polymerization conditions like temperature, initiator type, vessel used so that the same polymer with various other properties can be introduced. The material should also be suitable for the manufacturing stages which include the synthesis, inspection and packaging processes. So that's why we have to pay special attention to the kind of polymer being chosen for the contact lens. Now these are some examples of the soft lens polymer, some of which I have already mentioned during the beginning of presentation. Starting with HEMA that has been the first material to introduce in the hydrogel lens that is hydroxythalmethacrylate or the polymicon lens. We get to see this material a lot. Uh, in the Bosch and Lohm lenses, the conventional lenses from Bosch and Lohm is made up of HEMA material, which is a low water content material. Next comes Hilafilcon A, which is again found in the Bosch and Lohm SL59 lens. Balafilcon A is also in Pure Vision. Alpha Filcon A in SL66 Toric. Lotrafilcon A in the Alcon lens like O2 Optics, then Air Optics Aqua. Then Sanofilcon A we can see in the QView lens from Johnson Johnson. Eta Filcon A is also a Johnson & Johnson material, which is a high water content polymer material. Now coming to the free radical polymerization that I have already mentioned before that the contact lenses are mostly formed by this particular process of free radical polymerization. Now why? Because there are certain advantages to it. Firstly, with the help of FRP, long polymer chains can be formed and more the length of the polymer chains, the better will be the tensile strength, better will be the modulus of elasticity, etc. of the contact lens polymer. Another advantage of FRP is that it can very easily form the gelling networks because what happens in polymerization, there are many initiation sites within the vessel. So, this allows for the simultaneous growth of many chains which can physically entangle or crosslink to form the gel network. There is another advantage that in case if the monomer contains two different functional groups, then that will enable the chemical bonding of two different polymer chains with the monomer. So, as a result, what happens? The copolymerization can take place very easily and the property of the contact lens can get enhanced further to make the lens more advantageous or more beneficial for the consumers to use. Now, this is a very important point to note that to date, most contact lenses are produced using free radical polymerization that I said already. Now, there is another advantage that why is this used? Because it doesn't require expensive reagents such as catalysts. Catalysts are often composed of heavy metals, which is something to avoid for human health. That's why FRP is preferred so much over the other types of polymerization while structuring the contact lens. So, until now I was using the word copolymerization. What does it actually mean? It means the combination of two different polymers. That is only copolymerization. So, today most contact lenses are produced from polymerization of two or more monomers. Consequently, copolymerization is often the first method used in overcoming the issues with a single polymer. So, suppose if the contact lens is made up of a single polymer, only say HEMA, it will have the property confined to HEMA only. Okay, now HEMA definitely is a low water content material. It has a specific decay, specific decay by T, not as good as that of a high water content lens or a silicon hydrogen lens. So, if I want to improve the property of that particular contact lens, I have to bring another polymer to co-polymerize with HEMA so that I can enhance the property of the lens further. So, that will become more beneficial for the consumers to use. Another example is a silicon polymer. We know silicon is a gas permeable material but it is a rigid material. 
but despite being highly oxygen permeable it is not ideal as a homo polymer contact lens material so that's why this particular issue can be overcome if silicon is made to co polymerize with a hydrogen material for example pure vision in pure vision silicon has been made to co polymerize with balafilcone which is a low water content hydrogen material so as a result what happens a lens carries the properties of both the gas permeable material as well as the hydrogen material so that's how it becomes a superb combination for any consumer to use that lens for an extended period of time therefore co polymerization is used to enhance the physical properties through the cross linking of polymer chains by adding the molecular weight to the chain so this is a very important thing to understand about co polymerization so other modification materials can also be incorporated in the lens which are called surfactants to improve the property of the lens further now what are surfactants surfactants are those molecules which have a hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic tail in it now usually the hydrophilic tail of the surfactant interacts with the aqueous layer of the precorneal lens tear film and the hydrophobic end of the surfactant remains within the hydrogel part of the lens now in a recent experiment it was seen that a 10 degree reduction in the water contact angle which is the weighting angle was achieved with about 2.4 weight percentage of surfactant that was covalently bonded to the hydrogel by uv polymerization so this experiment actually gave us a an understanding a clue that surfactants can also be added to the contact lens to improve the properties of it Now this is the picture showing a surfactant where you can see the two tails the hydrophobic tail and the hydrophilic one the red one is hydrophobic and the blue is hydrophilic see the hydrophilic one is interacting with the aqueous environment of the tear film and the red hydrophobic part is within the contact lens itself okay so i hope that this presentation had given you a little bit of idea about the polymer matrix of the contact lens because it is really important to understand the microscopic structure the basic structure of the contact lens which is leading to having a different kinds of properties in it which we explain to the consumers and the different things that we are learning so this is actually the basic thing from where everything starts so actually there are a lot of other things to understand so uh, i just wanted to present it very precisely to introduce the concept to you if you have any doubt any confusion any queries on this you may please come up with your questions in the comment section and i'll see you again with another video very soon till then please take care bye